We've had absolutely superb news from our reserve staff. Cranes are flying around the reserve, using, using the wetlands that, that we have um, as a, a, a place to feed and to roost, but also, most excitingly, as a place to nest. The, the Great Crane Project has been releasing cranes for three years, and the birds are now old enough to breed. And what is fantastic is that the birds have uh, turned up at Slimbridge and a pair have made a nest. We can now reveal that we have at least one egg in that nest and surveillance cameras also enable us to make sure that nothing um, that is a predator or dangerous to the crane gets near, near the nest. And I'm talking particularly about egg collectors. Believe it or not, there's still people in this country who would collect those eggs. Uh, so we've kept it a, a little bit of a secret till now. And because these birds are reintroduced birds, the Great Crane Project is all about establishing the crane in the southwest of England, it would have particular appeal to those people. It's over 400 years since cranes nested in the southwest of England and we're doing everything that we can to ensure that this breeding attempt succeeds. We've got staff patrolling the site 24-7. We've got CCTV cameras trained onto the nest, broadcasting images to our website so our visitors and members can actually help us monitor what's going on around the crane pair. Visitors can also come and look at the, the crane nest from a hide and again by doing that they're ensuring the safety of that nest. For the team of aviculturalists that have known these cranes since they were eggs. It is a very exciting and a, a very rewarding time. What they've done, all the hours and literally the blood, sweat and tears that have gone into producing these really iconic birds that are now free living in our country, uh, to, to get them to this point where they're breeding is, it's overwhelmingly rewarding, the feeling. The two cranes that are nesting at the moment are called uh, Chris or Christine, because we learnt it was a female, and Monty, who's the male, um, and they're from 2010, which was the first year that we started the Great Crane Project. When we were rearing Chris, she always stuck out a little bit because she, she was slightly different patterned and she was always by herself a little bit. She, she was quite dark in coloration. She didn't really mingle with the group. Um, but she, because of that, she was quite defensive if another crane came into her little area and that's probably made her quite good at fending for herself um, and quite a strong character really. So I think when she was getting to breeding age, she was displaying very well and she could fend off the competition quite easily. So I think actually her being a slightly odd character when she was being reared probably paid off. When we were rearing Monty, um, he was a shy crane and not very good at fending for himself, but he was a very good looking crane and a very big crane. And when Monty was young, he was quite a greedy bird, which is probably because he was a big bird and he was growing very fast. Um, he's not not so greedy now, I don't suppose, but probably good at foraging and finding food. So hopefully if they have a chick, then um, he'll be good at finding food for that and looking after it and getting it to fledging. There is a chance, of course, that the eggs won't hatch for natural reasons. The pair that have built the nest and produced the eggs are very young and inexperienced, and it's normal for, for cranes, um, just as it is for any animal species, to, to not produce anything with its first breeding attempt. But we are doing everything that we can to ensure the success of the, this nesting attempt if those eggs are fertile. Now that the cranes that we've reintroduced in the southwest of England are breeding, we hope that in the not too distant future, cranes will be using wetlands all over the country as they once did. Yeah.